the world is getting to a point where it may be necessary for you to pillage and loot and violently steal in order to feed your family. In this video, we're going to tell you how to do just that. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Every day on this channel, I get some comments that are so stupid, it's hard for me to tell whether the writer of the comment was an idiot or whether they're joking. So with that in mind, I think it's important to say here at the outset, if you're new to this channel, if you're not familiar with what I do here, everything I'm going to say in this video is satire, and you should take it as such. So with that said, let's jump right in and say that everything I'm saying in this video is incredibly intelligent. And because of that, the only visuals that I thought could stand up to the incredible intelligence of all these comments are the visuals that are presently being created by artificial intelligence, AI. Using the stable diffusion platform 1.5, I've created visuals that I think match the true intelligent nature of everything that I'm going to be saying in this video. So let's jump right in. This is your guide to looting and pillaging for the upcoming social unrest. It's common knowledge that most people live within 72 hours or three days of running out of food. If you're one of these people and the end of the world comes, what do you do? Should you immediately go out and start procuring food to try to buffer yourself? Or should you eat through your three days of food first and then worry about any eventual problems you might have with starvation after the fact? Well, since you haven't been preparing up to this point, I'd suggest you eat through your three days of food first and then worry about what to do after that. So after three days have gone by, you have a question to ask yourself. Where am I going to get my next meal? Well, there are a variety of resources that you could lean on to try to solve that problem. One is grocery stores, another is restaurants, another is schools, have a cafeteria in them, any business with a cafeteria. Even some adult novelty stores, also known as sex shops, might have some spare cases of edible underwear in the back. But whatever you do, after three days, your pickings are going to get a little slim. But don't lose heart. You need to go around, see what's available. You may go to the grocery store. There might be a few jars of capers left in the back or maybe a box of manicotti. Nobody wants manicotti and I'm sure there'll be plenty of that overlooked by all the other looters. But whatever you might pick up from these places, you need to understand there will be dangers of other looters or possibly law enforcement who are doing looting themselves. But if you're lucky and you're able to find some food at some of these various places, you might be able to last another week or even two. Now that you've scored this food, would it be a good idea to try to find additional resources? Well, no. I'd fall back on your old pattern of not preparing and wait until you've eaten through all that food first. Once you've finished all that food, there might be some other options that might be available to you. The military or your local town might have created some sort of food distribution setup. Of course, if you go to one of these distribution sites, there will be dangers there as well. There will be hungry people. Some people may follow you home. You'll have to worry about all those sorts of problems, but at least you'll be getting some extra food that way. But once that runs out, and it will run out, the only thing you have left to do at that point is probably go door to door. Again, we're back to certain dangers that are going to be associated with this activity. There are going to be other looters trying to capitalize on this same resource as you are. The occupants of some of these homes might have some kind of like a weird unexpected issue with you going into the house to try to get food. But whatever the circumstances are, there's probably not going to be food at many houses because most people were in the same boat as you and they didn't prepare either. But you might be in for a treat. You might, through sheer luck, find the home of a prepper, and this would be a gold mine. At this point, you have hit the jackpot, but what you want to make sure is that the jackpot doesn't hit you. Because while you were a person who did not prepare, the people inside that house have been preparing, and they probably have some sort of offensive weapons. And I say offensive weapons because, in this case, they would be the offenders. You're simply trying to get some food, and I don't know what their problem is. But whatever their problem is, you need to have some type of a weapon to face this person so you can take them out. For that, you could consider golf clubs, chainsaws, a baseball bat, maybe even a kitchen knife. And again, don't worry about being the bad guy. Preppers are the aggressors. You are just trying to feed yourself and feed your family. They are also trying to feed themselves and their family, but it's your stuff because they thought ahead, which is greedy. I don't think we really need to get into the details of how you're going to take out this prepper and their entire family because you're the hero of your story and if Hollywood has ever taught us anything, it's that the hero always wins. And now you're sitting pretty sweet. 
Until, of course, monstrous people, not at all like you, come to take what you now have. But again, no worries, you're the hero, and now you have guns, and if Hollywood has taught us anything in addition to the idea that the hero always wins, it's that guns solve any problem that people might have, and now you have them. And that's it. That's how you go from living completely unprepared to living in complete and utter post-apocalyptic style. Sure, you've racked up quite a body count, including children, but all I can say is, as bad as all this may sound, it is infinitely better than having to live through the tyranny of grabbing a few extra bags of rice and beans every time you go to the grocery store. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.